Welcome to Give a Heck. I am your host, Dwight Heck, and for much of my life, lived my life in quiet desperation, wondering how I was going to pay the bills, take vacations, save for retirement, and one day wondering if I would get off the hamster wheel of life and have purpose. A life that most of society lives, which takes us to work, then home, then repeat, and pays us hopefully enough just to survive. The harsh truth that most live with more months than money and have no idea how to live life on purpose, not by accident. This ensures the mass majority are living not just financially broke, however emotionally and mentally as well due to financial pressures. In each episode, I will introduce you to thoughts, ideas, and guests that can help you to learn how you too can live life on purpose, not by accident. Good day, and welcome to Give a Heck. On today's show, I welcome Nancy Picard. Nancy is a certified integrative coach through the Ford Institute for Transformational Training and the Levin Life Coach Academy. She's certified coach in many areas, such as Breakthrough Shadow, Empowered Parent, Courage, Healing Your Heart, Leadership, Holistic Lifestyle, and Bigger, Better, Braver Coaching. She is the author of the international bestseller, Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage, Transform Your Life. Prior to her work as a coach, she owned and operated a personal training gym called Tight Ends Inc. She knows what it takes to help people achieve big goals. She holds multiple personal training certifications and has focused on health and wellness for almost 20 years. Her path toward coaching was a natural evolution, and she has a BS in psychology and MS in education. One exciting thing, in 2017, she traveled alone in Thailand and Vietnam and undertook her biggest challenge, climbing Kilimanjaro at the age of 61. Coaching others to step out of fear and into bigger versions of themselves is her passion. She is the mother of two grown sons, an active grandmother to three beautiful granddaughters and one year old grandson. She is an avid hiker, biker, skier, and yogi. She is yogi, pardon me. She is a passionate, she's passionate about her four year old Australian Labradoodle Bliss. I'd like to welcome you to the show, Nancy. Thanks so much for agreeing to come on and share with us some of your life journey. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. It's, this this will be fantastic. So one of the things that I start off with my podcast and I have focused on since episode one is a person's origin story. And some people think that their origin is their or their backstory is just from, you know, when they started out their adult journey. And really, at the end of the day, I've found that our origin from our earliest recollections to where we are today are tied together whether we had a good childhood, a trial and tribulation childhood, whether we had a combination of the both, we maybe were inspired as a young age because of somebody that would have an association with our family. Our patterns and stuff are so important, as I know you agree, because I've researched you. So Nancy, please do me a favor and tell me your origin story and what key things from your childhood to your adulthood led you to where you're at currently. I'd love to, thank you for asking. So I had a really good childhood, Um, you know, as a coach, I deal with so many people who had horrific childhood. So I have to just start out that I came from a loving family. I was the baby. I was the third girl. I basically was the son my father never had. Um, So I'm very athletic, I'm very sports oriented. And I was brought up, that honestly, I could do anything, I could be anything, but that it should fit in with me being a wife and mother. So it was sort of a counter contradiction that I was growing up with, like, yes, you could be anything, you're a superstar, but you should really just be a wife and mother and have a side gig, maybe kind of thing. So as an adult, that's really interesting because I could see how it all played into, you know, what I went after. I got married at 21. I was married 26 years. I love being a wife and mother. It's really what I, because that's what I aspired to be. 
And um, when my kids were in school, I did actually open up a personal training gym that I did for 16 years. But in the work that I'm doing now, I get to look back and really uncover the shadow beliefs that I got from my childhood and see what themes really came up. So one theme that came up was around money because my parents were hardworking. My dad was, you know, owned a plumbing and heating business, very blue collar and never wanted to spend the penny. I mean, my parents passed away in the last two years and they left us a lot of money, which we wish they had actually done more with their money while they had it. Like they didn't need to leave it all to us. We wish they really had lived more and done more, but that was what, that was their main goal, right? So um, I see some of my money stories are really come from that. Like I grew up that you didn't spend money, you saved every penny, you know, spending money was not something that was in my family's, you know, they came from the depression. And so I have my parents' um, beliefs that they actually got from their parents' beliefs. Like at some point, you really have to figure out your own money stories and be able to change what you want and what it means to you. And I think when my parents died recently, I really did see, well, I love that I'm conscious about my money, but I also don't want to die with all my money, you know? So it was actually good for me to see that. So other than that, I have to say I had a great childhood, but when I was five years old, I was playing with a lighter and I put myself on fire and I ended up in the hospital for a week. I burnt down the piano that I was sitting at and some of our furniture. And I didn't end up with any scars on my body. They were all first and second degree burns. But so I didn't actually think it really played a part in my life. But as an adult, I've now, and, and as a shadow coach, I've now come to see how much it really does did play into my life. And that I actually came away from that fire with the shadow belief that I wasn't safe alone. And I didn't know I had it because that's what shadow beliefs are. They're hidden in your subconscious. There's something that happens or, or there's just beliefs that come from your family or your parents or your religious organization and you make meanings around it. And those meanings get buried in your subconscious you're not even aware of them, but they rule your operating system. So one that ruled my operating system was I was not safe alone. I didn't uncover that till I was 50 years old and divorced and miserable because the inner wounded child in me still didn't believe she was safe alone. And the moment I uncovered it through a, a shadow process working with a coach, it my whole life just made so much sense that I was always in a relationship. I had a million friends. I was never alone because I made a commitment to myself to never be alone. So the belief was that I wasn't safe alone. And the commitment I made to myself was to never be alone. And that worked for really well for me until I became a divorcee. And then instead of really looking at my life and enjoying my life and moving forward from that position, I felt like I was the victim in my story trying to recreate and fix that picture because that child inside of me didn't think she was safe. But in general, I have to say I'm blessed with, you know, my parents just died at 94. They died two years apart. So for 60 some odd years, of, I had both of my loving parents and my siblings and um, I have no complaints. That's, that's, uh, that's good that your parents lived that long, um, that you had a great childhood. There is, you know, some similarities to what you um, what you shared that I get, you know, like there's the patterns that we learn from, um, our parents, they learn from their parents, my parents, parents, like my, my mom and dad are first generation Canadians, um, their parents, both their parents immigrated um, to Canada with their parents. And, you know, during the, my dad was, he was born in uh, 1941, my mom and dad. So they were at the trail end of the depression, but their parents lived through the depression. 
right? My mom was mm-hmm. one of nine kids. My dad was one of 18. Oh so my God, 18 I, kids? Yeah. Uh, so the whole, my whole life, we grew up in a, in a, in a fear of scarcity mindset because mm-hmm. of my dad. And my dad was a workaholic, self, you know, self-made, very successful millionaire, did not know it. People didn't know it, lived like a pauper, didn't spend his money. He's still alive. My mom and dad are in their 80s, but they live like they're broke. They'll, you know, buy, buy things that are used or buy broken things. Not to say that things buying, people buying stuff used is bad, but they could spend some of their money and they don't. And his response is, is what am I going to leave you guys? Well, that's our problem to take care of our lives. You spend your money, enjoy your life. Well, now they're in their eighties. They're, they're still relatively healthy, but they don't do anything. And everything is about saving and giving for their kids when they're gone. And so many parents are, I find are that way that, that are affected through the depression era, through Mm -hmm. that pattern behavior. And initially I used to count every single penny and I'd live very frugally when I was a single parent of my five adult kids. And I had to break out of that. And similar to you, I had some good coaching and I peeled back the Mm -hmm. onion, I guess, and found out and discovered that I had challenges too, that I had beliefs, shadow beliefs, as you mentioned. And so that we have a lot of consistency in what we've gone through. Yeah, Yeah, a lot of of similarities. So you know, and having that victim mentality you talk of in our own story or going through a divorce. I went through all that too. And, and then, you know, regrets come up and we live in a state of worry. And then one day you can be depressed living in the past. The next day you're anxious about what the future holds. And, you know, we get labeled like you were labeled by your parents. So you, like you said that you could do anything as long as you're a wife or mother. (laughs) Well, you know, what kind of their intention wasn't to do that to you, but it's pattern behavior. People repeat things over and over again. I find that so congruent in the last 20 years of lifestyle and being a finance coach for, for people in my country and and around the U S and the world. And there's a lot of similarities we all go through. The thing that's not similar is that people don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to correct the problems. They jump on a hamster wheel and spend that wheel the rest of their lives until the day that they pass away living unfulfilled or not part of me having lived their dreams they have they're unfulfilled and they they you know they're laying on their deathbed i've never heard anybody and you've heard this yourself be on their deathbed wishing they had worked more right Right. never so i work with people a lot too to ensure they understand and peel back what's caused them to get into their financial strife i spend a lot of time on goal setting with them so i get where you're coming from and that's one of the reasons i wanted you on the show because my listeners know who i am but they don't know who you are so i want them to understand how you can help them out um so one of the things i'm going to step through your story some of the things that you've mentioned and talked about and get your take on things so that people that are listening can understand who Nancy is so that they know, like, and trust and feel comfortable enough to reach out and get your support. One of the things I wanted to talk about is, you know, I've known as well as utilized the talent and drive myself of personal trainers in my life. I find that they're very focused and help one goal set, then implement a plan to achieve their peak physical health. Do you find you brought much of the mental skills and determination from being a trainer into your coaching career? I did a lot, actually. What's interesting is that as a trainer, all people had to do was walk into my gym and I was in control. Like you just had to get your butt into the car and show up. And then I ran the show. You didn't have to make any choices. You didn't have to do anything. You just had to follow and do exactly what I wanted. And that really fits my personality. I'm I'm a boss, you know. And um, what happened as a coach is that you have to allow people to find their own answers. And you don't, it's, you, you know, even if they want you to, No, you have to come up with your own action steps. I'll support you. I'll be your accountability partner. If you're taking on something that I don't think you should do, I'll let you know. 
but there's more of the work is more on the client than it is when I was a personal trainer. But I am a I am a growth mindset. I'm very driven and I don't allow fears to keep me stuck. So just like when I was a trainer and my male client would say, I, I, it's too heavy, I can't lift that. And I'd pick up the 225 pound and I'd start doing bicep curls and I'd be like, really? Because I'm 5'2 and I can do it, you know? So I would like motivate them in a backwards way to do it. It's sort of the same with my clients. I don't ask people to do anything that I don't do myself. I live my life, my life in integrity of the things that I say I'm going to do. And that's all I expect from my clients to show up every week, having done what they said they were going to do so that I can help them learn to be confident and to love themselves and to trust themselves. And that only can happen when they stay in alignment with the things they say they're going to do. Otherwise, they're not going to trust themselves. So why would anybody else trust them? I agree. So, yeah. So I think that the similarity is just that that's who I am. I show up as who I am and I don't judge who they are, but I do hold them accountable to a high level of follow through. Well, and, and as you should, I like how you brought it up, though, that you don't coach on anything that you haven't experienced. There are so many listeners people watching, listen closely. When you're finding somebody to be your mentor, to mentor you through life or to coach you, make sure you look behind the scenes, open the door and ensure they're not a facade. There's so many coaches out there that are posers. They don't have, they're selling a course, they're selling, um, you know, one-on-one training and they're maybe they're book taught, maybe they've got a degree or a diploma, but that doesn't mean that they've gone through the school of hard knocks, that they've experienced it and helped it. Like myself, as a coach, financial coach and lifestyle coach, I'm in my 20, this is my 20th year. I've got all the experiences and, and of all my clients mm-hmm. that continually build me as a person including my own life to help others out. So, you know, it's imperative that you find somebody like Nancy or myself that's actually knows what they're talking about, Mm -hmm. because you can do, uh, I've seen so many coaches do more harm than good, not just in their financial pocketbook of that person, but mentally and cause even more slowdown or the worst case that I see is they don't want help. Right. I've sat with people that, you know, get referred to me and we're sitting with also with an individual or a couple and we're, you know, let's peel back the onion and see, you know, what's going on in your life. What's, what was your childhood like? And, you know, go through all this stuff. And sometimes I can't get them to say anything. Well, then I find out they've had supposed help air quotes (laughs) with other, from other people and it damaged them to where now they don't even want to get help. Oh, wow. Interesting. well, it's scary, right? It, yeah. it, does it happen a lot? No, but it happens enough where in 20 years, it's still my I've heart right now. I can feel the anxiety I'm feeling for them because, yeah. right. But it is what it is. Um, one of the things though, I want to add just as, because many people don't take it serious enough. What is your take on how important it is to one success that they actually have physical fitness as part of their lifestyle and their climb in life? Well, you know, I'm a holistic lifestyle coach. That's one of the things that I coach in. And so how often you work out, how you eat, what you eat, how clean is the food you're eating? How much water do you have? What time do you go to bed? All of these things are part of the big picture and it's all about self-care. So as a boundary coach, I actually start with boundaries with yourself. What are you doing? How are you honoring yourself? How are you making yourself a priority? How are you taking care of yourself? How are you lying to yourself? You know, how many people say, I'm going to exercise every day and the week goes by and they didn't do it, or they're going to, you know, they're not going to drink or they're going to meditate or all the things that we tell ourselves, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly uh, basis. And then we don't follow through because we're so used to 
being okay with not following through. We're used to it. So, so people who need, who, you know, want to feel more self-love, self-trust, self-confidence, it starts with sticking to your own self-health practices. And it's really important. See, I think there's the whole concept about autopilot. People live on autopilot. They get on that hamster wheel and they just doing the same thing every day. They're not checking in with themselves. They're not checking in to say, you know, what do I want? What do I need? You know, how am I honoring myself? Am I, am I speaking my truth? Am I speaking my opinions? Am I staying in integrity with what I say to myself? Am I becoming more resilient? Am I growing mindfully or do I only do the things that I know I can do well so I have a fixed mindset? These are all questions that if you don't start to ask yourself these questions, you know, am I as happy as I want to be? Why am I not happier? How is my relationship? Like, where's my, I, I've got to at least get off my emotional autopilot, you know? So what do I need to be happier? What do I need that I'm not getting? How do I serve myself better? Am I a people pleaser, an overdoer? Do I twist myself up in a pretzel to be, you know, digestible to other people? How am I taking care of me? And how do I make myself a priority? Yeah, I, I see that a lot. People are, well, as you said, people pleasers. They're also living lives of a facade where they're trying to present themselves not even just as a person, but what they possess as something they're not. They're always trying to please everybody else. They never do check-ins like you talked about. They don't check in with themselves. They don't analyze them, th their lives. Really, in essence, so, and I, I'm not perfect at it, but I try to check in with myself every night, right? Mm -hmm. Have gratitude, do gratefulness uh, exercises, and think about what, what happened today. What were the spectacular things? What were some of the character building moments? What did I, you know, and I forced myself not to beat myself up for things that didn't, that I didn't achieve to the success level I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I tell myself, okay, what could I have done better so that I don't mm -hmm. have that same pattern happen the next day? And, you know, people listening, it takes work. <laughs> None of this is, it, we're saying it's just going to snap your fingers and get done and easy. You have to be one of the willing, you have to want it. And then research the information, find somebody that can help you. So, you know, at the end of the day, everybody thinks accountability is if I needed help, I'd be accountable to Nancy. No, Nancy teaches me to be accountable to myself and gives me course exactly. corrective course corrective information based on what I share with her. So again, honesty, if somebody is helping you is key, vulnerability, number two. and you know, accountability in order for you to push yourself forward, you need to be accountable to yourself. You need to be honest with yourself and say, Hey, I could have done this. As you mentioned, people will say they're going to go, they're going to eat differently, or they're going to go out and they're going to work out and days pass, weeks pass, months cat pass. And they literally did not stick to the promise they told themselves. And I find, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, are, you know, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind communicate whether we want them to or not. But if we tell, tell ourselves or tell others that we're going to do something and we never ever accomplish it, eventually in life, it just implodes. Our brain doesn't like the fact that we're lying to ourselves right? Or that we're not actually fulfilling what we do. And it's something as simple for the listeners. I tell myself, I'm going to make my bed every single morning before I leave my bedroom. I do it. Mm -hmm. If I don't do it, I'm not keeping the promise to myself and I slow down my mental mindset. Yeah, that's a boundary you're setting with yourself. You know, similar to your nighttime routine, I check in and I have my clients check in with what I refer to as their internal flame. So on a scale of one to 10, with one being very low and 10 being, you know, a roaring fire, you know, where are you today? What's your flame? What was your flame today? And then what's one thing that raised it? And what's one thing that lowered it? And then you get to take that information and say, oh, you know what, when I talk to this person, 
I feel like crap when I hang up the phone. So guess what? Maybe you need to spend less time with that person. Or when I speak to this person or when I exercise or when I would do whatever, it raises my flame. Well, then you need more of that. So it's not just checking in, but it's also taking that information and like using it as your own laboratory. How can you be happier? How do you get your flame higher? How do you keep it higher? And then how do you do less of the things that actually lower it? And that's, to me, that's key to get out of autopilot. So it's the same things you're doing. It's just taking stock at the end of the day and saying, you know, sometimes they'll say, okay, what's one thing that I could do tomorrow that would make it better? You know, what did I miss today, but that now I, I will make sure I do tomorrow and yeah. and then do it i love that though the you know your internal flame and what's raised it or lowered it to me you know associations are so key and and it's associations though aren't just everybody always thinks when you say the word associations it's who you're associating with well it's not just that what are you associating with during the day what are you reading what are you listening to what are you doing on social media which is so influential mm-hmm. in our lives today what do you what, what kind of movies what kind of television shows do you you know and do you try to change because our associations can keep our flames low and as you said you you know if this person makes you feel lousy then you shouldn't be hanging out with them and i get people when i coach them they'll say well it's my parent or it's my brother or my sister and we see each other i said well mm-hmm. you can still avoid them well no i can't i said sure you can when do you get together well family events okay your event starts at 5 go 4 30 right because you know you're going to have your meal at five go a half hour ahead of time not too much sooner so that you're spending time with them that you don't want to but where you can limit the interaction right go there eat your meal i tell them once you're done say another 25 30 minutes tell them that you have other plans right and you're not lying because your other plan is to not be in that circumstance to affect right. your mental mindset. Right? right. I said, it's what you tell yourself. Well, cause I've had people say, well, you're lying. No, you're not. Right. I have plans and I'm being serious. I have plans not to be here long because <laughs> exactly. it's going to affect yeah. my mindset. So yeah. I do it now today. I have specific family and, and people associations or even groups that I, that I hang out with that, I like majority of the people, but there's always one or two people that are just, you know, they're like, like that pee under their mattress or the poor person that's Mm -hmm. sleeping eight eight mattresses up and they can feel that irritant. And I just do what I need to do. Right. I focus on things. I learn to be very, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? I learn to be very concise in what I say and communicate so that I don't, and I don't trigger them to blah, (laughs) right? right dump all their negativity all over you, the, right? yes or all yeah. the people around us so i like how yeah. you put that that's that, that's great the internal flame so nancy you're certified in many areas of coaching yeah. i can see a correlation to many of them and that most need some if not all of what you coach on to be the best version of themselves and live a life on purpose what is your take on the fact that in some ways they do tie together or do you feel that each one is unique and have a specific niche always in a person's life? Um, my different coaching modalities, you asking me? Yeah. Well, interestingly, I'm certified by two, I'm mainly certified in two different camps. One is the, um, the Debbie Ford, you know, the Ford Institute, Debbie Ford, who's passed. And then uh, Nancy Levin has started a new coaching certification called Levin Life Coach Academy. And I've, so I've coached in both, I've mentored both in both to help other students become um, coaches, but all of them are still based in shadow work. So they're, but they're different. Like my healing your heart is really for people who have a broken heart. Like they, they're, they've gotten divorced or they've gotten 
estranged from one of their children. I mean, they're, or, they're, or, what, or their best friend stops speaking to them and their heart is broken. And that whole modality, even though it's still in shadow work, it's helping them get out of the victimhood of their story and see how they've co-created everything that's happened, what is on their side of the street, and that empowers them to move forward. And so I have healing your heart and then we, I've rewritten it for loss from death because I think that divorce and death are very different and what you're telling yourself and how you're moving on and how guilt comes into it and fear are very different. So those are really, if somebody comes to me and they just broke up with somebody, they've just gotten divorced, they've just gotten out of relationship, they've just, they're just getting over you know, the death of somebody, that's my go-to. If somebody comes to me and they want, you know, they're just not happy. They're, they, they know they want more for their life. They don't have a clue what. I take them through breakthrough shadow or bigger, better, braver coaching because it's all twisted in there together. It's all the disempowering beliefs that you have to first uncover. People don't even know they have them. They just feel that they're stuck or they're afraid to move forward and they think that the rest of the people that they see that are successful they they think are braver than them well they're not braver none of us are fearless you you can't wait till you're in a fearless state so it depends on what people come to me for so yes there's some overlapping i mean i just got certified in worthy and worthy is all about the how self-worth and net worth are tied together you know if you don't feel worthy you don't ask for the raise, you give away your work, you don't ask for what you need, you don't, you put blinders on and don't pay attention to your money. You know, you buy what you want or you, and you don't even think about how you're going to pay for it. It all is a part of worthy. So that's, if financial issues are, are your biggest concern, I take you down that road. So they're interlaced, but they're also can be very specific and different from each other. And a lot of times I just, you know, somebody might come to me because they just broke up with somebody, but they're also trying to change their job or they want to lose 20 pounds or they want to move and they're afraid. I sort of take all my different modalities and on a weekly basis, I just pull from whatever I they are telling me is coming up for them. So it's not like I just now take somebody through, you know, okay, now we're going to do the 10 sessions that I have on on worthy or reinvention or jump. These are all different certifications, but I mix and match them depending on what's coming up for each individual. Yeah, that's that completely makes sense. It's no different than in my, you know, in my business, my career, I've had, I've got knowledge and information that I learned even before I started in, in the finance coaching business 20 years ago, that still, helps me out today so there's different things even today that i do that all that information ties together like you said you you may be coaching on one thing but there won't be information from another part that's still relevant that helps out so all your knowledge makes you effective when whatever you're coaching whether it's divorce death or somebody right. you know wants to lose weight or they're not happy with their physical appearance or whatever the case may be so i can appreciate that i i appreciate your explanation that was very good thank you one thing you said earlier that i wanted to come back to was that we coach from our scars not our wounds but the more things we've lived through the more we can share with our clients. Like I've been broken from a divorce. I've had babies like die at the end of my pregnancy. I've had cancer. I've had like, so I've had, fatigue, you know, I, I've, I've mothered, you know, two children. I'm a grandmother of four. So I owned a personal training gym. So all of the different like traumas that I've lived through have not only made me stronger, but they attract those clients into my life because I've actually shared in those experiences and I can coach not from my wound, but from my scars, how I've healed. And then they can see, wow, well, you did it. I can do it. You know, 
I'm just an ordinary person. And I have learned how to trust in the universe that everything's happening for me and that there's a, you know, a rhyme and a reason to everything that happens, even if I don't see it. And when I teach them all of that spiritual, you know, beliefs behind it, coupled with the fact that I've been there and I'm on the other side is helpful. No, absolutely. It is. Since you brought up the fact of things happening, um, you know, for us, I, I and I skip forward to area because I, again, like I mentioned, I'm pretty specific about what I want to kind of information I want to get mm-hmm. out of a, out of a guest and you're a, you're a wealth of information. So Nancy, so many have a boo hoo woo hoo mentality and constantly are saying, why is this happening to me? Tony Robbins and Ed Milet are two people that I, you know, appreciate. Uh, you obviously know one, maybe you know Ed as well. And many people I have followed over my lifetime state that things happen for us, not to us. How does one go about changing their mindset to see the good of why things happen and not dwell on the negative and stay stuck? It's a great question. And I myself had to learn that. So I didn't grow up with that belief. And I certainly didn't have it when my marriage fell apart. I fell apart. Um, And I used to notice that I thought that very religious people had like this sense of when bad things happened that, you know, they, they were going to be okay. And I don't have that religious beliefs, but I have that spiritual belief that everything happens for a reason I don't have to be the general manager of the universe. There is a bigger source outside of me that is protecting me. And when I fall, I'm falling forward and I'm going to use it as a stepping stone. And I'm going to really look at, okay, what are the lessons here? I mean, I, I, after my divorce, I, you know, I was, because I still had this belief, I wasn't safe alone. I dated a zillion guys, you know, um, and I would break up with them and move on. I couldn't, I didn't really know what I wanted. So one day a guy said to me, you better figure out what you want. Cause you're leaving men in your wake. And I thought, oh, that's not, that's not a good thing. <laughs> like that doesn't sound good. Um, but I, I didn't know what I wanted. And once I started to be in this work, I recognized that I didn't need to know. And that I needed to just, when something did happen, I needed to look at it and say, oof, what am I supposed to be learning here? What does the universe want me to know? Because I don't want to be here again. So that's the lessons. The lessons is picking yourself back up, licking your wounds and moving forward. It's not about how often we fall. It's how long we stay down. And if you keep falling, and you don't do the work to figure out why you keep falling, you're going to keep falling. You have to learn what the universe is trying to tell you. It's almost like they're screaming at you. What do you mean? I I keep sending you all these messages. Why aren't you learning them? So, or they send people too. It's not just messages. They send people to it. Yeah. Yeah. And we have situations. Yeah. We still have that. Oh, life's not good. And well, right. didn't you say that you talked to somebody here recently? Oh, yeah. So then they spend the whole time with somebody that's willing to support or has advice and life lessons to teach them because of their own experiences. And they're so wrapped up in their six inches living in that living in, you know, that trauma that they don't even know that that person was sent to them by the universe or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be to help them. Right. right. Whether you're somebody that is faith, faith bearing on the God side or the spiritual side, doesn't matter to me. Right. The universe gives the, the things in the universe. There's clues. Success leaves clues. Right. And that people just don't get and it. Failure They're, leaves clues. They all leave everything. Absolutely. Leaves clues. Absolutely. And it's helped me as a parent. I mean, you said you've got five kids. I have two kids and four grandchildren. And my kids have had trials and tribulations in their marriages and in their lives. And the old me would get taken down by it. The old me would, would still be saying, you're only as happy as your saddest child. I don't believe that anymore because now I know 
that whatever happens to them is supposed to happen. And I can't save them from their own journeys. They're, make, they're grown men making their own decisions and life is happening for them just like it happened for me. So I can support them. I can have compassion for them, but I don't take to my bed because of something that's happening in my kids' lives. I don't even take to my bed for something that happens in my own life. I just know I have this peace around that everything is happening to support the evolution of my soul. And that I'm on this earth this time around to learn specific lessons and to have, you know, use my gifts to the best of my ability to help as many people as I can. And that's the path and journey that I'm on. Um, And you know what? Your path and journey is remarkable. My path and journey is remarkable for me. And the the thing that that ties us together and a lot of the people that I have on as guests or people I associate with in groups and masterminds have the same current theme. They're never going to stop becoming the best version of themselves. They're always going to climb and they're going to, and, and they're working on themselves between their six inches between their ears. Cause I work on it all the time to not take on other people's burdens. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's been really hard for me, as you mentioned, I'm, a, you know, I was a single dad of five kids. I got four grandkids and that fifth's on the way. And I literally try to, you know, I pick up the pieces once things have happened to them right as they put it when they don't realize it's happened for them sometimes it's a corrective thing and then I have conversations sometimes they're receptive sometimes they're not right but I'm also I'm also an empath which made it really tough raising five kids because what you probably don't know four of them were girls my four uh-huh. oldest are girls my youngest yeah. is a boy and oh yeah that I'm a giant antenna as an empath picking up on people's <laughs> stuff and taking on other people's burdens. So I constantly have to work on that one. It's it, no matter how hard I try to make it a habit, it does not. Still feel it. <laughs> I still feel it. Right. And I feel, I'm like, why am I drained? Oh my gosh, I was around my one daughter today. Or I took a phone call when I probably shouldn't. So I very, listeners, it's okay not to respond to texts. It's okay not to return a phone call. It's okay not to communicate with people because you're worthy you're a person that needs to worry about your self-care and and you can't always take on the burdens of the world i'm telling you i'm not perfect i work at it and we know that nancy does as well which is very refreshing this conversation is amazing i love it thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing with us so nancy you speak of a person's childhood beliefs ruling their operating system and keeping them playing small Can you please expand on this and why it is so important that one realizes that their past programming is causing a lot of their challenges and how to get past and rewrite these beliefs so they have a new empowering ones that support their adult goals? Yes, it was a mouthful. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So that brings us back to shadow beliefs. And so I'm going to give you some more examples. I gave you the one that I used for myself. I like to use my own because it's a powerful one and easy to use. But um, shadow beliefs sound like this. My voice doesn't matter. My needs don't matter. My needs will never be met. I'm unlovable. I'm broken. I'm unworthy. I need to be perfect to be loved. I need to control everything to be safe. These are all examples of things that have happened in our childhood. I need to stay invisible to be safe. I have multiple clients that have been sexually abused as very young children, and they're either bulimic or anorexic, or they weigh 300 pounds. And it's because they believe that this will protect them from anything bad happening. And it's not in their conscious mind, it's in their subconscious mind. Or you can be one of five kids and you're the youngest and nobody ever asks your opinion. Nobody wants your opinion. I was on a call with a client recently who every time he went against his father or gave his own opinion, his father slapped him. So he grows up with the shadow belief that, you know, speaking up will get me in trouble or my voice and my needs are not, you know. And so then therefore you go through life 
and you never give your opinion, your needs are not met because you never state them because you don't believe you're worthy of them or you think you're going to get hurt. Like, you know, you marry somebody and you still never state your needs because your programming from your childhood is that stating your needs is going to get you hurt. And so, or, you know, you stand up in class as an eight-year-old and everyone laughs at you because you misspelled a word or you misstated a word and you decide in a split second, I'm stupid, I need to stay quiet so no one will know. So you do, that protects you, you stay safe, you never give your opinion while you're in elementary school and junior high and high school, it all works for you. But now you're in college or you're in, you're in a business and you're still not stating your opinions or you're not giving any suggestions, you get passed over in your career because people think you don't even have any good ideas. But you do, but your wounded child is still like warning, warning, don't say a word. So if we don't uncover all of those beliefs, number one, we can't set healthy boundaries because if you believe your needs don't matter, then you're never gonna ask for what you need. Um, if you think you're unworthy, then you're never going to ask for how, a raise or, you know, a, a, a new career. You're, you're just going to play small. And if you think that you're unworthy or you're unlovable, then you only attract people into your life that are going to prove to you how unworthy you are because your brain wants to be right. It's cognitive dissonance. Your brain wants what it knows. So it fights for all those limiting beliefs. And if you don't uncover them, you will not change them. You will stay stuck, plain small, so that you don't, so you can live out those childhood beliefs that are very disempowering. Once you uncover them, you can look at them and say, oh my God, I see how they kept me safe, but now I see what they're costing me. I am safe to move. I am smart enough. I am good enough. I am worthy of an equal partner. I am worthy of love. I will be chosen. You have to change that disempowering belief and give yourself a new empowering belief. And I mean, to me, that's why shadow coaches or any coach is so important because it's not easy to do it on your own. Like I have those exercises in my book so that people can do those internal processes and come up with their own shadow beliefs and their own underlying commitments. But without any of that help, you just, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna just, I mean, you, there are certain things you can do. You can say to yourself, the story I tell myself is, but the truth is. So the story I tell myself is, I'm not worthy of love, but the truth is I am worthy of love. Or the story I tell myself is that I'm not smart enough to um, start my own business. But the truth is I am smart enough to start my own business. Or I say I want X, but what I'm experiencing is Y. I say I wanna lose 30 pounds, but what I'm experiencing is, is having dessert every night. Well, you're more committed to instant gratification and soothing your wound than you are to long-term gratification in getting the thing you say you want. So that's another way to work with yourself is just ask yourself, you know, I say I want to be in a long-term relationship, but what I'm but what I'm experiencing is only looking for what's wrong and leaving the person before they leave me. Because you're more committed to to keeping your heart safe. And that's a big one for so many people. So they're all over the place, but you have to uncover them before you can do anything with them. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely. And like you said, you know, a person can't do it alone, right? I've never, I love when people say that they're self-made or they've healed all their traumas in their lives or whatever. And they, oh, I did it all on my own. BS right? Yeah. You're, you're lying to everybody you're broadcasting that to and you're lying to yourself and you're just causing even more trauma, in my opinion, yeah. because something along the way, if you were able to, you know, correct, right, or you had something change, or were you able to accept and adapt, like you said, and figure out your shadow beliefs and, and uncover those healthy, unhealthy things that have gone on so you can set up boundaries, how, you can't do it on your own. It's almost mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah. We all need some form of 
shadow coaching or coaching or whatever to help because sometimes like they that old saying goes you can't see the forest for the trees yeah. I look at I look at the trauma I went through as a child and it, one of the most cathartic things like you mentioned when you know some of this stuff you didn't even once you got you were getting divorced or divorced you just still didn't realize I was the same way when I went through my divorce I went through many more years after the fact I think the most cathartic thing for me was writing my book right <laughs> and having talking about my, and being vulnerable and spending the five months where I'd send it to the editor, get it back. And then I'd add things, change things. And maybe I shouldn't say that. And it was always about, and I thought to myself one day, I'm going to say that. If that hurts somebody that reads it, that is a friend or family, and they take it as it being about them, that's their problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. This this is my journey. This is my book. Right, this is my and, book. And at the end of it, I still should have probably put some things in that I didn't and well that's always a number two edition I guess right I so, guess true right yeah cathartic though it was very cathartic for me to get rid of some of the shadow beliefs I still had that I didn't even realize and it, my book mm -hmm. only was written and came out last year I wrote it at, at end of 2020 into 2021 it was about a five month process and probably could have been done sooner but it was raw <laughs> it was real and uh yeah so Listeners, Nancy started her journey after her, it sounds like after her divorce and continue to grow and she's continuing to grow. She's even taking more courses herself to better herself. The, the underlying thing here is that you never stop growing and moving forward. And once, at least in my opinion, maybe Nancy will disagree. Once you think you've arrived, you're in trouble. Yeah. Right. You are yeah, in trouble. You're, you're never done. And you know, Nobody gets to the Olympics without a coach, right? Exactly. I love that. So, that is so true. Nobody gets to the Olympics without a coach. Absolutely. So what, right? in whatever it is, like, you know, I, whatever I'm doing, whatever, I mean, I, because I was a personal trainer and before I was a personal trainer, I had a personal trainer. Before I was a coach, I had a coach. I, I, I'm like two years into pickleball. I still take pickleball lessons. Like I'm really all about, getting to the end game as quickly and in the best way I can with the most knowledge. And that's always for me, who can I hire? You know, this is what I wanna know. This is where I wanna go. Who can I hire that's gonna help me get there quicker and faster? And that's the way I feel. So, you know, coaching and therapy are very, very different. Therapy, you know, coaching is for psychologically healthy human beings that are stuck or that need support or want to live differently. It's, it's not, you know, they're so depressed, they can't get out of bed, go see a therapist, go see, you know, a psychiatrist. That's not what we, what we do. We work no, with we healthy don't. people exactly. who are stuck in their fears and their disempowering beliefs, and they need support to move forward. And, 100%. you know, I'm sure you do the same thing. If I've got something that's up, I'll go to one of my coaching friends and I'll say, I need a session. And we do, we do it for each other all the oh, time. Absolutely. Like I had uh, one of my good friends, he actually, he's come really close to me. He actually wrote the forward to my book. We've gotten to know one another quite well. And he reached out to me in the last few days about some stuff and he's a high level coach, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't have things that are challenging he knows he can share with me he sent me a message saying this frustrated him and we communicated back and forth and then i had something happen earlier today i sent it to him and we don't necessarily have to have a face-to-face -face right yeah because i also belong to masterminds and with that he runs and i can bring up stuff on a group setting there's we have a right. very small mastermind but you're right we always need to have a um you know they say that saying that we're always you know, we're, we're the five closest people in our lives, blah, blah, blah. I expand outside of that in the sense that I have people outside of that five that I might not talk to for eight, 10 months that are specific to, you know, their talents, their time, their treasure is specific to something that might only happen once a year for me. It doesn't mean we don't see one another or we don't talk, but it does. It means that I only need to reach out to maybe once a year or once every couple of years and say, Hey, such and such, just is what I'm going through. 
And I know that they're the type of person. So I've got a toolbox or repertoire of people right. that can assist me on all aspects of my life. And some yeah. of them are, some of them are generalized coaches, but yeah, you're right. And we help one another out. We just, we just do all the time. Right. Some of I'm it's, always in a some of it's paid, some, some of it's paid, some of it's free. Right. <laughs> exactly. or it's just, it is what it is. Right. Well, that's because we're in the business. So yeah. we, we, yeah, have we, that. Are, we have we, that. Yeah, we have, we support one another. There's a synergy. Mm -hmm. There's a group of us that we don't charge each other for anything because we're so tight knit. And then there's other times where like, I I talk to somebody that I've known for a while and I'll tell them, okay, you know, let's, I'll help you get kickstarted because I know it's a financial burden, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not right for me to give you all my time for free when I could be giving that to somebody else, because I find if I give away too much for free, people aren't taking it serious enough either. There's no pain. There's no, there's no, uh, what's the word? There's, they have nothing. Skin in the game. Yes. Thank you. There's no skin in the game. So, yeah. and I've had to tell people and that, you know, it's odd time they get upset and I'll say to them, listen, I apologize if this upsets you because that's not my intent. I'm apologizing for making you upset, but I'm not going to apologize for the fact that my time is valuable. Life's in session. I can't ever recover this time. So I don't see the fact that I've helped you a couple sessions now, you doing anything. It's the same old, same old. You're you're coming back to me with that hamster wheel. You're not, I don't see any change. You're not taking any of my advice. So this is what's going to happen. If you want further sessions, it's going to cost you X amount, because if I don't, I could charge somebody that will take my advice, change their lives. Now it's good for me, my personal well-being, because as coaches, we take on a lot, let's be real, Mm -hmm. and it's good for them. So this is what it is. Make your choice. Sometimes I never hear from them. Yeah, right? sometimes I just don't hear from them again. And you know what? That's okay. They checked yeah. out of my life and, and they did me a favor because yeah. again, time's in session. I can't get our time back. So yeah, I like that. I just wrote that down. Life's in session. I also yeah. think that was you setting a boundary around your own self-worth. And I have to do the same thing all the time too. I still have to check myself, yeah. Nancy. I time. still, I still get so sucked in and, and I, and my heart just as an empath, I'm just like, Oh, I want to help them. And really, am I doing them a service? No, I'm not. No, because- you're not. Also, their reaction to your truth is not your responsibility. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's true. That's big. Yeah, that's true. Your, their reaction to your truth. That's all about boundary setting. I you love set that. a goal, you set a boundary and their reaction to your truth is not your responsibility. And so when somebody, when I say something that is like that exact kind of thing and they get upset, I say to them, I'm sorry, you're upset. That's your work. Exactly. Like your your, yeah. your response to my truth is not my responsibility. It's yours. Yeah, I and didn't I'm make careful. you feel I'm bad. I'm careful you're about apologizing. Bad. I'm a careful yeah. about apologizing too, because if I apologize, I'm specific as to why I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing right. because I did not want to make you upset. I'm not apologizing for the information I'm giving you. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, exactly. Yeah. That's it, my truth. You know, Yeah. exactly. A hundred percent work around it. So this is something I, I, you know, I've got a couple more things and then we'll wrap up. Nancy, you state that selfish is not a bad word and selfless is not a good word. Please explain why one must need to understand the differences to move forward in life. So, we're, you know, as little, as little children, we're told, you know, don't take three cookies. That's selfish. Don't do that. That's selfish. You need to put other people's needs in front of you. That's why we grow up to be these people pleasers. And if you look at the word selfless, it's less selfless, less of you, right? So the thing about being selfless is that you're not even in the story. You're so gone, your needs are not being met. I'm not advocating that you become a selfish human being. I'm advocating that you balance selfless and selfish. You learn to make yourself a priority. You learn, it's like you want to go through life putting your oxygen mask on first. And that doesn't make you a selfish person. 
it actually leaves you with more left over afterward to take care of other people. But when you just give, 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 and you're selfless, 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 you get overwhelmed. You become passive aggressive. You end up exploding at the very, at a wrong time with so much energy because you've been pushing down your emotions for so long and then boop, something happens and they explode. And like the person's looking at you like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, that came from you never stating your needs or making your needs a priority or taking care of yourself. And if you don't do those things for yourself, you cannot expect other people to do it. Nobody's a mind reader. You know, I'll have clients say to me, well, you know, we've been together 30 years. He should know what I want. You don't even know what you want. How could he know what you want? It's not yeah, true. That's, that is, I hear that all the time. But, you know, like even, because I do a lot of, oh man, I, I tell you, when you get into somebody's circumstances, and they think their whole life's all about the fact of the numbers that have caused it all. It, a lot of it's what you talk about, though. It's the shadow beliefs. It's the way they were raised improperly with how they should, you know, their boundaries with everything, including money. Yeah. And I and I talk to them and they'll, they'll blame the other person. Well, such and such doesn't care. They just go and spend. And well, aren't you the person that takes care of the finances? Yeah. Did you tell him what circumstance? Well, he should know or she should know. I hear it both, both sexes, right? And I'm just going like, ah, oh, I got my work cut out for me. Yeah, <laughs> right? for so sure. I'm going to earn, I'm going to earn this dollar for sure. Well, and I do a lot of coaching for, for free with my clients that are on my, like that I'm a, do financial planning for. Wow. I do all the, the end result is I know they're going to do investments with me or insurance or pension mm -hmm. planning. So I do all that for those clients. I do all that initial stuff for free mm, right? because the end result is I help them un unfurl their sale yeah. or get rid of all their, you know, not all of it, but help them on the journey of getting past it. Because if I can't get past that, the end result of the financial planning falls apart. I've seen it right, exactly in 20 years, right? So they can't yeah. get past this or they're, as, uh, as you talk about your shadow beliefs, it's almost impossible to help them. Right. It's just, yeah, you know, I, it's, a wanted, it's a band aid. It's a band aid. I wanted for a while to do a, to do a, a workshop with my money manager for divorced women because they have so many beliefs. They're such a victim, or they oh. think that their life shouldn't change and that they, that they should continue to spend as much money as they were. And yet they'll run out of money with that mentality. And so there's so many conversations to have with women or women that don't even know how to take care you know their husbands paid for everything so they're, they're they're clueless or they think they'll never run out of money or they think that they're they deserve x y and z because that's how they used to be and so i've been dying to do a session with her around self-worth and with divorced women I, I'm, I'm not sure if you get a lot do you get a lot of divorced women with that mentality um, I do actually, I actually have had, cause I have an agency too. I don't build like I used to, I got tired of babysitting people and trying to help right. them learn how to be or do what I do because they can't be me. But I've had, I've had some agents that I've trained over the years that were divorced women and yeah, they can't get past the fact mm -hmm. of their own trauma from what they allowed not mm -hmm. that they wanted to intentionally allow, right. but what they allowed in their right. lives and married lives. And now they're divorced. They got that broke mentality. They haven't dealt with their, their beliefs, their shadow mm -hmm. beliefs, their patterns and training from might a lot of it starts right. in childhood. It magnifies in their divorce. And I do see that. Yeah. And it's, it, it's soul crushing. And I also have a lot of single dads too, that have, have gone through the same patterns that, cause they're, it's not as prevalent listeners as it is with single moms, but there is a lot of single dads. I'm one of them. Right. Right? I, I, have, I went through it. So it, it is, it is self-limiting beliefs that they've been taught that they're, right. they just don't understand. Yeah. And, and so I spend a lot of communication with them and it's tough though as a guy because their trauma could be rooted in the fact that they were abused by their husband or now ex right or maybe it was their father that did it a male I, I found that too that 
that male figure in their life. So it can be very, I have to be very sensitive. And I've had to be honest with you, pass off people to other female, female financial planners managers. Yeah. Because I just, it's not that I can't or don't want to, the trauma is so real and so raw mm-hmm. that I can't, I can't even get them to know, like, and trust me. Right. I so then, I, I, then I got to do what I got to do what's best for them. Right. Yeah. So, I love that. Right. So Nancy, you're the author of the international bestseller, bigger, better, braver, conquer your fears, embrace your courage, transform your life. What drove you to write this book and what can one expect to learn? Well, what drove me to write the book was that, um, Actually, it was 2019 that I went and climbed Kilimanjaro at 61. I'm old enough. You made me two years older. (laughs) So I'm like, no, I got to fix that. Um, I climbed Kilimanjaro and I wanted to write a book about what's your Kilimanjaro? You know, how do you, you don't have to go climb 19,341 steps, but maybe you want to get married, maybe you want to have a child, maybe you want to start a new career, maybe you want to move against the country, maybe you want to lose 50 pounds, whatever it is, what's your Kilimanjaro? And so the book is really a step-by-step how to do it on your own, because not everybody can afford a coach or wants to take the time to be coached. And so at least start with the book and it helps you uncover your soul's vision. It helps you uncover your internal, pro- your I do internal processes around shadow beliefs, underlying commitments, getting out of autopilot, um, preparing, asking for help. All of the things, it's a step-by-step journey that will help you do the thing you wanna do. So that's the first step as far as I'm concerned. Get the book, get the audio. There's a, a very inexpensive, online evergreen course that goes with it it's 12 audio lessons that's just me with a workbook and the book and you can do it with yourself i also highly recommend doing it with a friend so you can be each other's accountability partners i also offer zoom group coaching where you're getting the audibles and you're also getting me for 12 weeks in a group and we're working on it even to a deeper level So that was the impetus. The impetus was to have a layered where everybody could get my information at whatever level they were ready to receive it. That's, that's amazing. You know, and thank you for doing that (laughs) because people, people, you know, so many people have the right intentions to want to help others, but they're not willing to put in the legwork, you know, the, mm-hmm. that, that skin, the knee and start and figure it out, especially, you know, like you said, you're in your fifties and your trauma, you know, you're dealing with trauma and then your divorce and look where you are today. Congratulations. Yeah. Good Thank for you. you. Yeah. So you. Um, I, I assume your book is available on Amazon or different platforms for them. Not to every- find it. It's on all, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. It's in some bookstores. Um, there's a link to it on my uh, website, Nancy Picard, lifecoach.com. There's a free chapter. So you can even see if you want it. Um, Sweet. And then there's also the audible, which is me. <laughs> it's so my you, voice. So it's available on audible. Perfect. Uh-huh. Because yeah. I'll I'll be literally today I'll be buying it for myself because I'm oh, a huge I'm a huge listener of books right I I, I literally too. I read so much in my career that mm-hmm. when I go to sit down and read a book I don't know about you but I, ugh, I fall asleep me too. it puts me, my brain just is so relaxed that I find I'm reading the same page over and over again but if I have an audible I love it me too and I double you know I'm hike I hike every day so I'm a big hiker and I'm if I'm alone I'm listening to a book if I'm driving I've got the book on if Mm -hmm. I'm doing the dishes if I'm working out in my home I've got a book on so I I go through books really quickly that I couldn't do otherwise because I don't sit still long enough to read a book is probably part of the problem I get it I just finished a couple days ago um, I'm a Napoleon Hill fan and I had been putting off listening to one of his books that I bought quite a while ago. And it's uh, it, it is a book called Outwitting the Devil. And I thought I thought I didn't know what to expect. Outwitting? Outwitting? 
outwitting. Oh, outwitting the devil. It is freaking is it amazing. Good? Oh my gosh. It is so okay. good. He literally interviews the devil. The book was written in the 1938 and oh, his geez. family, the Napoleon Hill Foundation, the family released it in 2011 so that it could be published. And then throughout the narration of the book, I don't know if you know who Sharon Lecter is, very mm -hmm. famous person. Um, Sharon Lecter throughout it interrupts and goes and it's an I the conversation between the devil and Napoleon Hill is not happening anymore. And she explains how it ties into today's society still. But if the book had been released in the 1930s and Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill probably would have been killed because oh, it is, really? it talks, it talks about the education system. It talks about politics. It talks about the school system. It talks about the medical industry and it is so prevalent to today's society. And it was written in the thirties. Wow. It, it blew my mind. Probably one of the Crazy. best, probably one of the best audio books I've listened to in the last two years. Right, like I, I was, yeah, I I'd literally be driving and I'd be hitting the rewind button or I'd be out for a walk hitting the rear. And I want to listen to that again right. going, what? Right. <laughs> it, it just, it is just, yeah, it talks about how people are stuck on, like, I, I can't think of the words now, sorry, but it, it's, I would highly recommend it to the listeners and to yourself. Well worth every penny I paid for it. And I honestly, I can envision myself and I've done too many books listening to it again, right? Just yeah, because there's so much, too. so much information. So Nancy, if you had to give our listeners one last closing message, what would you tell them in regards to giving a heck and never giving up? That the juice is in the journey. It's not in the end game. So step in, get out of you auto, get out of autopilot, get out of your comfort zone and step in. All of the drama and all of the angst is on this side of stepping in. And once you step in, it's gone. So I recommend tiny steps, one at a time, proving to yourself that you can do hard things and big things, even by chunking down their little things. And then don't worry about the end game. Just enjoy the whole journey. Yeah, and that's how it makes one, you feel. Absolutely. That's one thing I, I, I do talk a lot about people is enjoy the journey. Everybody's always worried about the destination. They hit the mm -hmm. destination and they feel I, I, cause I've interviewed and talked to so many people and they're, they don't feel satisfied. Well, they forgot to enjoy the process. They just right. they hit the destination that's going like, now what? Or yeah. they don't celebrate it and they start the next thing right away. It's always the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, you know, mm -hmm. they're diagnosed with a terminal illness or mm -hmm. something happens. And that's, that's, that's a sad life in my yeah. opinion, right? I that's agree. So yeah. So I appreciate you saying that juice is in the journey. I, I remember re reading that in, uh, it's in my book. book. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't see it in the book, but it, right. you wrote it, you had wrote it in, uh, things that topics to discuss. Yeah. Right, for that, right. for, on the, on the application. So right. I'm glad you brought that up. So our time is almost up. I want to respect our listeners in your time, but can you please tell the listeners, I know you mentioned it, but tell the listeners again, what's the best way that they can reach you at? So Nancy Picard, P-I-C-K-A-R-D, lifecoach.com, all one, one word. And on my website, you'll see all my different coaching modalities. Your podcast will end up there when it's released as well. So all my podcasts end up there. And there's a button for a free discovery call. So you can see whether this is coaching with me is something you want, something that would work for you. And if not, whether one of my courses would work for you. I have a new course for entrepreneur females called Career Strategies for Achieving Your Greatest Potential. And I offer a 20% discount call code, which should be in your show notes also called BBB Success. And that's all videos and internal processes and sceneries and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. I've got it all there. It's all there. One shot, one shot deal. Right on. I'll make sure that is in the show notes. As you mentioned, uh, just to remind um, the listeners, just go to giveaheck.com, hit the podcast portal button. You'll go in there. You'll see Nancy's 
uh, face and you'll see the show notes underneath. You can click on it, all the links um, to access for her book and her website and some pertinent information will be in there for you to read so that you can, you know, further your journey and reach out to Nancy. So thanks so much for being on. Give a heck, Nancy. I appreciate your time and sharing some of your experiences so that others too can learn it is never too late to give a heck. Thank you for taking time out of your day and listening to Give a Heck. If you find value, I'd appreciate you sharing with your friends and family so they too can learn how to live life on purpose, not by accident. So you do not miss the next episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and please also post a review. I look forward to reading your comments. This has been Dwight Heck. If you want to check out other podcast episodes or today's show notes, please check out my website, giveaheck.com. And until next time, together let us all strive to give a heck.